it, it, it should not be through buying armor. It should be through skills and stuff like that. Uh, if you're wearing, if you're genuinely wearing armor, uh, you you messed up. You're you're breaking the rules. Also, if your companions save your life, um, you should you should have conflicted feelings about it. Like they they should, your character should be a bit of a salty shit about it. Of like, you robbed me of my doom. How could you do that? And they will have to maybe like if they you know try and explain like oh i care about you or whatever and he, him be like Murr, you know <laughs> how do you shoehorn love into a sh your shameful backstory well it depends do you want your lover to be dead or still alive because if they're dead then you can very simply say that you love someone and they you know they died when you were supposed to save them because maybe you know you said you would meet them somewhere and it ended up being somewhere dangerous um and you didn't arrive in time or you ended up facing off against some terrifying creature and uh you were so terrified that you ran away and they died because you ran and you'll like you're haunted by how your cowardice in that moment you know will you know that shame will haunt you for the rest of your life or maybe, maybe uh, they were already in a marriage, like they were already committed in another relationship and you committed infidelity, either on someone you loved or, you know, you were seeing them behind somebody's back who they, you know, were married to for honor reasons, but not because they loved them or whatever. And you got caught and the shame of that like hangs on you because she you and her were both exiled and then she died later or something and like you know she you were both exiled and were utterly shamed for reasons kind of sort of beyond like you know there's a lot of different ways to do it like that that's a super common one like gotrek gotrek became a slayer out of love because he lost loved ones. If they're still alive, you know, maybe you have kind of a, you, you try and come up with an interesting reason how. You know, maybe, maybe he loves someone and he went off to like, go do some crazy bullshit to prove to her, fa her clan or her family that he was worthy of her love and that they should approve him. But he took too long or he was gone too long. And by the time he got back, she had been committed to another and he couldn't stand the idea of living a life without her. So he took the Slayer Oath because he's like, I might as well already be dead. Or something. I don't know. It depends on how sappy you want to get with it. You got options, is what I'm saying. Carver shamans are so much more dangerous and annoying in this game than they were in any of the other games because they actually can raise more than just shitty fallen. What's the craziest reason a dwarf became a slayer? What do you, by crazy, do you mean like what's the dumbest reason or what's like the most like, like hardcore reason?
Dumb? Hmm, what's the dumb? Hmm. So, probably the dumbest thing... So, the dumbest reason I've ever seen... So, it's not from, like, a specific story, but it's from actual lore writers of, um... Warhammer Fantasy, which in my opinion is just as good. So like actual canonical writers. Um, the most hilarious one I ever saw proposed that was also super dumb as like a reason to like throw your life away and take the Slayer Oath was... Um, so in our world, um, there are a lot of families that have like very particular recipes for things. Uh, most notably like sourdough recipes. So like they have a very particular... Um, they have a very particular, uh, recipe that their family has passed down for a long time, um, on how to make sourdough bread. And the idea was proposed of a dwarf who was part of a clan that had their own sourdough recipe, um, and he ends up losing it. Like, somehow, some way, uh, he ends up losing the recipe, and because of that, they're not able to recreate it anymore. And because of that, he's dealt, he's, he has such horrible shame about losing this family recipe that's been passed down for like thousands of years that he takes the Slayer Oath and is like, I will never, never again will I bake. Never again will I, <laughs> will I like be welcomed in a hold or acknowledge my clan because I have lost the sourdough. No, that's valid. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's fair. I mean, probably the dumbest one that I could think of that is almost assuredly happened would probably be something involving an engineer. Um, like, a dwarf engineer creates a borderline idiotic invention that, like, it's just, it was just a dumb idea from the onset. Um, oh, shit. We got the last golem, boys. Let's see it. The Iron Golem. Rise! Rise? Oh, he's a big boy! Yeah, that looks sick. Oh, that's cool. You can just see he's like made out of like shields and stuff. I'm gonna have to figure out which golem synergizes. Uh, anyway, so like if an engineer made a really stupid invention, like when I say stupid, I mean like something that like like some kind of invention that like automatically toasts toast and then like shoots it out in such a trajectory so that it lands in your mouth. But the way they designed it and ended up screwing up and accidentally killing someone or like someone choked on it. And so they were forced to do the trouser leg rit uh, ritual as they were expelled from the... Uh, they're expelled from the engineers guild and they were so ashamed of their failure and being expelled that they uh they they take the ritual that would that would be the most likely thing i think uh oh interesting okay 
Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. So the Iron Golem is big on stunning. So he does a lot of stuns. The Blood Golem... The Blood Golem drains the blood of all nearby enemies. But heals itself and deals damage. And can also tank health for me. And then the Bone Golem has a taunt. I think I want to go Blood Golem because I really like the idea that when I when I have high health, he gets like a he gets 50% bonus damage. That's fucking wild, dude. I like me bonus bonus D. Give me that extra D. Give me all the D. Just all of it. Just put it in me. I need the damage. Talk to the Wanderer. Be careful! Fend them off, please! Protect the Wanderer. Alright. want some oh, we should get moving you are welcome Oh, I thought that was a gun for a second, the bloody point. It kind of looks like a gun, a little bit. Just a tiny bit, sort of, kind of. Nakai is looking small. Fleshy Nakai, not big, Sag. Also, happy Pride Month. Hope, you, hope those of you that it's relevant to are enjoying it and celebrating and staying safe and all that jazz. Random aside. I thought that was the right way, but maybe not. State your business. Reverend Mother Prava expects me. Open the gates. Ooh. 
Oh, hey, it's Vigo. You were good soldiers. Worked hard. Fought hard. <laughs> Drank hard, too. Oh, they're burning all the soldiers that died. Brothers. Sisters. I hope you find peace in these flames. Vigo, what are you doing here? So you lived. I came clean to Prava. About taking that woman's bribe. Ugh, it's looking bad. <laughs> My ass is on the line. Might not have a job when she's done with me. Hey, you're here for her, right? Let's go together. Maybe she'll go easy on me if you're there. I don't really see why I should be helping your ass, but alright. Why did Gotrek become a slayer? Um, I don't necessarily want to spoil the entirety of it, but the TLDR is that his... While he was away, um, on the... Submit to the light's judgment, Vigo. Rude. Um... While he was away, um, a, on the, the, that Chaos Waste expedition that he did with Malachi and Snorri before they were all slayers, um, a horde of goblins managed, many could bear your sins. managed to make their way to, uh, where Gotrek's family were, and they killed his wife and daughter. Um, his daughter was very, very little. Um, so Gotrek came home, um, and he found that his wife and daughter had been massacred by goblins. Um, so Gotrek got what vengeance he could, and then in a rage, he went to, um, he lived in the territory that technically falls under, like, Karasakarak, and there was a Thane who was charged with protecting the area his family's from. Um, so Gotrek went to confront the Thane and Gotrek kills him. Uh, so Gotrek murders, uh, his Thane. So he, he is a dwarf. He's a kinslayer and he like murders his ruler functionally for not protecting his family. Or at least that's how he sees the situation. And that's, that's like, that's an unforgivable line. You cannot cross that line. It was too much. Is that armor? This is no mere armor. This is a holy vessel of the highest craftsmanship. There's a ton of armor. It may uplift the repentant sinner directly to the light. Can armor do that? It looks too large to move. They rather than Flesh moves this suit, though how is only known to a privileged few. The practice has been long abandoned. Something big is coming. Holy war. Mark my words, she wouldn't have asked me to prepare a relic like this otherwise. What are the ranks of slayers and what happens when you reach the top? Uh, the ranks... So, there are technically more ranks than just the famous ones, but the famous... Because it's based on what you kill. Like, you are a slayer Maybe of the things you have killed. Um, so, like, if you kill a troll, or something equivalent to a troll, you're a troll slayer. Um, and that's, like, the basic bitch rank. Then, uh, above that is giant slayer, or something equivalent to a giant. Above that is dragon slayer, or something equivalent to a dragon. And then the top um, level, so to speak, is Demon Slayer, which is someone that's killed a greater demon or equivalent. Um, as for what happens, um, hopefully you don't reach that rank. It's considered a bad thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's considered a curse in Slayer culture. Um to make it to that point because your goal is to die in battle uh, against like a worthy opponent. If you keep killing the biggest, baddest things out there, 
that means that you like by your own logic need to kill something of that level or higher um so it's kind of this like it's kind of like a horrible spiral of the more things you manage to kill the bigger things you seek out which if you then kill those you then seek more bigger things which makes it more difficult for you to die um and it's awful it's awful every time you kill something that big and bad that's an opportunity you had to die honorably in battle that you failed so it is a failure to continue ascending like that it's not considered a good thing at all Do a lot of slayers end up wandering the chaos ways? Yeah, a, a lot of slayers end up going to super dangerous places and never being seen again because they presumably die rather quickly. Hold. She's expecting us. Here we go. Good luck. It's like the one guy nice to Vigo. Have the new watch commander replace the forces we lost at the mine. So, you've returned. Vigo here tells me you were braver than he. A map of Estuar with a throng of red markers and arrows all pointing towards the fabled city of Chaldeum. Uh, oh, I have some various options. Scots Glen is under threat from Lilith. Donin sent a message about it already. Why doesn't Inarius go there to deal with her? The prophecy says the battle will unfold in hell. That is where the blow must be struck. Ah, interesting. So, Inarius refuses to engage with Lilith unless it's where the prophecy says he's supposed to. I need a divine blessing to chase Lilith. First, you will be made worthy of a blessing. A holy war cannot be won with faithless troops. Make no mistake, this war is holy. Lilith has brought the eternal conflict to sanctuary, and Inarius will deliver us as writ in prophecy. Until then, we have our parts to play. Make a pilgrimage to the Alabaster Monastery. Cleanse your spirit. Then we may discuss a blessing. Hooray! Cleansing rituals, my favorite. May as well make myself useful. Come by the ruins, south of here. Another quest done. Kor Valar. All right, so we're going to go get the blessing of Anarius next time. Oh, goodness. Thank you all so much for joining me for some Diablo 4. We might play some more tonight, uh, but at least for now, uh, it's about time for me to make dinner for Sadie. Uh, I also need to get dinner for myself and, you know, see my family and hang out with them a little bit. Um... So, yeah, uh, we're going to take a break for at least a little bit. Um, I'm not 100% sure if and when I'll be back. Uh, if I'm going to, you know, just keep an eye on uh, uh, my socials. Um, also, yeah, join the TRH clan uh, if you are so inclined. Um, I'll make a Discord announcement about that. But uh, I'm going to go get some food because I'm starving. So we'll probably be back to play some more Diablo 4 later tonight, to be honest. Um, but uh, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. We'll see how I'm feeling in like an hour or two. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you all for joining. Hope you had fun. Uh, let me see. Uh, sure, we can raid Battle Sea. That'll work. He's all he's playing hardcore on his druid. 
very cool. Anywho, um, yeah, y'all take care. And I will be seeing... Why is this button not working? Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Is it just not working at all? Of course not. That would, that would be too simple. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you.